All right, here's that cup of coffee. So we're gonna do quite a few meal prepping items today. Hey guys, if you are new, my name is Vanessa and if you guys like meal prep in the kitchen inspiration, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join our community here because that is exactly what I am sharing today. And I do a few different types of meal preps and in the kitchen videos throughout each month. So today I am in the kitchen, it is morning time and I have quite a few things on my list and hopefully we can get them all checked off. So let's go ahead and jump right into getting a few items prepped for my family to make this week go a little smoother. Okay, so we are going to start out by making a pasta slash spaghetti sauce. And I am using Kira's recipe as a starter, which is in the cookbook that her, myself, and Nicole put out a couple years ago, which is always listed in the description box. So I'm taking her recipe, but I am making sure that it is vegan. So I'm going, I'm going to prep this for my oldest daughter to have on hand, I kept a little container out in the refrigerator for her and then a full bag in the freezer. Whether we all have some kind of pasta dish one night or she just wants to use it for specific things that she is making for herself. Okay, so now we are going to make the dog food and I'm starting this, even though it doesn't take long in the Instant Pot, if you guys have watched any of my past meal prep videos. I've used the crock pot to let it cook all day and I've also used the instant pot. So the instant pot is definitely quicker and I don't need this for much. I don't think I'm going to do any prep in it. I might make some hard boiled eggs, but we'll see. So I'm using the instant pot because my dogs are completely out and I don't want it to be hot at dinner time. I want to make it in the morning, put it in the fridge and let it have plenty of time to cool off for them later on tonight. So in here, I just have eight pretty small chicken breasts. Then I found two bags of like a green, organic green veggie mix in my freezer that has been in there for a very, very long time. It had so much freezer burn, you really can't see it as much because I just poured half a cup of water. And the reason I only did half a cup of water is because this is frozen, it's going to produce some liquid. So I feel like my Instant Pot is gonna have enough to come to pressure and all that. And then I did not put the trivet in this time because I don't want chunks. Um, I have put chunks of veggies in my dog food before and the dog sometimes will eat it and sometimes they'll eat around it. So I'm going to get this nice and mushy and then shred it up with the chicken. So it's all just one shredded chicken and veggie uh, mixture. So I don't know if I'm gonna add pumpkin. We shall see what this looks like when it's all done, but pumpkin is really good for their coats. And both of my dogs have really bad allergies and I feel like the pumpkin definitely helps a little bit with that. So I've got chicken, half a cup of water, and two small bags of an organic like green veggie mix. I'm going to close my lid, make sure it is sealing, not venting. So with the chicken, you kind of just, I think you could probably get away with six minutes because it's not frozen, but because I have the veggies in there and I want it to get nice and mushy so I can shred all of it together, I'm gonna press my manual button, which just puts it at high pressure, but I'm gonna go to eight minutes and that should be enough. I'm gonna do a quick release. So my chicken should be nice and done. The veggies nice and soft and I'll be able to use my hand mixer to mix it up. So their food is definitely gonna be pretty soupy this week, but that is okay. I did add a can of pumpkin in here. That's gonna help thicken it up a little bit. And then again, it's really good for their coat. Being older dogs and having allergies, it just helps. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in. And doesn't that look appetizing? It actually smells really good because of the mixed vegetables. So they're gonna have like a chicken stew type of additive to their dinners every night. But this should last maybe two weeks since I did use quite a few chicken breasts. All right, so I'm thinking this might 
last more than two weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in this bowl for now. I'm not gonna put it in a freezer bag just yet. I'm gonna get it in the refrigerator so it can cool off and then maybe in a few days, I will take out half of it and put it in the freezer and then just work on the rest of it until I need to take the freezer bag out. So that definitely, it always makes more than I think. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in the refrigerator. And then next, we are going to play around with a food dehydrator. All right, so now we're gonna mess around with this dehydrator. So I have actually had this for two months. Um, I've tried it a couple times. Definitely takes a very long time. I'm going to be honest. I don't know how often I will use this. Maybe if there's just something that's going bad and I really want to save it, I will use this, but it takes, I've tried a couple things and it's taken much longer, almost double the time that they include in this book. Again, I am brand new to this. I might be doing something wrong, I don't know. That's why I really like to mess around with appliances and bring you guys along from the get-go. Um, they asked me not to share it the first time that I used it because they were all sold out. Okay, so you can check this out if you are looking for a dehydrator. I think the price is okay comparable to other ones. Um, it's pretty sleek. I mean, it's not as big as I thought it was going to be. It fits in my pantry just fine with all the hundreds of others appliances that I have. Um, I do love trying new appliances and all of that, but again, I want to be brutally honest. This was sent to me. I did not pay for it. They are not paying me though to do this video or anything like that. It's not sponsored. Sometimes companies just reach out and ask if they can send me their product and depending on what it is I say yay or nay so I definitely want to try this out one thing that I do want to try in it that I haven't yet is meat to make jerky and that type of item um, the only thing I've done is produce so I made some blueberries in here again it took like double the time that it stated and I still have those. I've used them in muffins and things like that. And the only reason I used the blueberries is because half of the package was starting to go bad. So I threw them in here and it went for almost two days before they were dried. <laughs> so hopefully the cherries don't take as long. So I do have these cherries. We did not go through them as fast as I thought and they're starting to turn a little on the brown side. So I'm gonna go ahead, oops and follow the directions. It says to pit your cherries, which I already did. I actually used this cherry pitter, which is fantastic. I got this off of either Zulily or Jane. Those are two sites that I've been using nonstop since quarantine began, but I'll try to see if I can find one on Amazon and link in down below. This was such a time saver because you can put six in here at a time and pitting these cherries took no time at all. So I'll try to link that but it does say to half them. So they're already pitted, I just need to cut them in half. These are on the bigger side, so I might even cut them in fours. And that way they're on the smaller side for when I'm throwing them into baked goods and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up, but it says to pit the cherries, half the table, half the cherries, and then it takes 22 to 26 hours. There's no other prepping you need to do. Sometimes you, do, you need to do a color protection on certain items, sometimes you need to blanch certain items, but the cherries, it says you don't have to do anything as a pre-treatment. Just prep them and dehydrate them. So 22 to 26 hours. I'm going to go ahead and get them prepped, get them in my dehydrator, and you guys are going to see this. I mean, this is something that obviously I'm not going to get done today because it takes longer than a day. So you'll see the finished product once they finish. Okay, so I've got my cherries on here. I used all of the layers except for the top one or the last one, so I don't need to put that one on. It does have, I should have showed you guys this before, but like I said, I've already filmed this and I went, went more in depth and then they asked me not to share it. <laughs> so I am just doing this quickly. Um, there is a mesh screen, so if any pieces get super small to fall through here, they won't fall all the way down and burn. This little mesh screen will protect them and save them. And then it does come, this is something that I wanna try too. I just need to get a collection of fruits and do that. But this is so you can make a fruit roll, which I think is really cool. So I will be trying that in the future, but I really want to get the hang of this first before I try something more in depth. 
really you're just blending up a bunch of fruits, spreading it out on this and putting it in here and dehydrating it. And then it's supposed to be a fruit roll. So, or several fruit, fruit rolls. So I've got all the cherries in there, get my top on, plug it in and then power. And what is it on? Oh, that's the time. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. Ah. We need to go to 22 hours. That's the least amount of time, which I'm assuming it's gonna take longer, but we'll check it at 22. And then the temp needs to be one, does it let me go to 118? No. All right, we'll do 122. It says 118 in the book, but it doesn't let me go to that. So we are at 122 for 22 hours. And if you guys can hear it, it is kind of loud. Ah, that's not too loud. It's not any louder than the dishwasher or laundry. So just so you guys know, it's not quiet, that's for sure. Okay, it has been 22 hours and it turned off automatically. So that's a safety feature. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. Oops, and they look done. They look a little crispy. Nope, that's just the color of the cherries. I could probably let them go a little bit longer, but I like, yeah. I like that, so awesome. I was really thinking, like those blueberries, I don't know what happened with the blueberries, why they took so long, but these ones only took the 22 hours, so I'm kind of impressed at that. So I'm gonna get these into a little container, um, and then again, I don't see myself, like if I need a dried fruit, I'm gonna buy them at the store, just because it is more convenient. But if I have fruit or other produce, herbs, that are about to go bad, and I want to save them, and you know prolong their life, keep them a little bit, and not just throw out money, this is awesome to have on hand for that reason alone. All right, now it is time to shred some cheese. I am completely out of shredded cheese and I have several recipes that I'm going to be making. Oh, and the dishwasher is running because when I'm working in the kitchen, it's a process. So I'm gonna be shredding probably just about half of the bigger blocks, but I'm going to shred all of these three blocks. And because I'm doing such a big amount, I will be using my food processor. All right, I've got my cheese done for the next two weeks. Sometimes it lasts a little bit longer. It just depends on the recipes that I'm making and all of that and how much meal prep I do. So we've got some Colby Jack, sharp cheddar cheese, a white cheddar, mozzarella, and Monterey Jack with jalapenos. Okay, next up for meal prep. I bought this a little while ago, and I meant to separate it, keep it raw, uncooked, and go ahead and separate it. This is a two pound. I was gonna do one pound and one pound in a gallon in a Ziploc baggie, and just keep it in the freezer. But I totally forgot to do this, do that. Put this whole, I put this whole thing in the freezer. So I took it out, let it thaw overnight in the fridge. I did have it sitting on the counter for a little bit to finish thawing. So it's got a little bit of condensation on here, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and just cook all of this and then put half of it back in the freezer and I'll keep the other half for breakfast this week or maybe in a couple days I'll go ahead and make like biscuits and gravy sausage or something, or sausage gravy I mean, to use that up or something like that. But at least we'll have some breakfast sausage in the fridge to use for whatever we want and then the other one will already be cooked. So at least that step is done and it's just in the freezer waiting for me for future use. So let's go ahead and cook up this two pounds of Jimmy Dean pork sausage. Anybody else have this problem with your meat masher? I use it to kind of separate it all and get the, if it's in a log shape, especially, broken up, but then I just like using a spatula to finish up breaking it up and I just feel like it doesn't stick as much and it's easier to wipe that meat back in here so I can cook it all up.
Okay, sausage is done. I'm going to let this cool off and then I've already got my bag out. So I'm gonna put half of it in my freezer bag. I'm gonna use my little bag holder to hold it. And then I haven't gotten a container yet. I'm gonna get a glass container and put the other half in that and just keep it in the fridge. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and pit the cherries. Y'all, this is amazing. So I will find one and I'll link it down below. And then every time I share any kind of video where I show these, <laughs> I get questions. These are from the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm not going to repurchase them though just because they're not dishwasher safe and I've ruined several of these, um, but I do love them. I'm just gonna try to find a little bit of a sturdier kind, but they basically just screw each side. So you could just have one, or you can have two, like that. So that's what I'm gonna use to keep the cherries in. So now we're going to make a loaf of white bread, hopefully. I've actually already tried a baguette a couple weeks ago and it did not turn out. <laughs> so I trashed that recipe that I found. This is a white bread recipe that I found and I actually really need a loaf. I did not pick up a loaf of bread for or enough of what we needed for this week. So I'm really hoping this turns out, if not, I have a box kit that I can put together, but I really wanna make, try to make it my own. So I found this recipe, I'll have it linked down below. This one says total hour, total time is an hour and 10 minutes. So the ingredients, I have everything out except for the water, one cup of warm water, a quarter cup of sugar, two tablespoons of yeast, a third cup of canola oil, actually two eggs they just have them separated one's going to go in the bread and then one is going to be mixed with water and brushed on top one and a half teaspoons of salt and then three to three and a half cups of flour so i've got my flour canola oil yeast eggs sugar and salt and again i will get the warm water right when we're about to use it so i'm going to go ahead and take you step by step and fingers crossed <laughs> this turns out because it seems pretty easy to make all right so I've got my one cup of warm water I'm going to pour that in my bowl along with the quarter cup of sugar and I am just going to stir that and let the sugar dissolve all right I don't see any more sugar in there it's all dissolved in the water so now we're gonna add in our yeast. So one tablespoon and two tablespoons. And we are just gonna let that sit for five minutes. All right, five minutes is up. So we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients and then knead it for five minutes. And that's why I've got it in my KitchenAid with my little dough hook here because I'm not about to sit and stir this for five minutes. I'm gonna let my appliance do the work for me. So this is what happened with my baguette. 
I don't know if I'm just finding bad recipes or if I just, I don't know. Um, but it asks me to form the dough into a smooth ball, keep the dough in the bowl, spray it, and cover it. I, I, I mean, that's completely so sticky. I even covered my hands with flour and nothing. So <laughs> I can't form that in a ball. I'm just gonna let it sit. I'm going to spray um, with the non-stick cooking spray and I'm gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and let it sit or let it rise for 15 minutes. And hopefully it does what it needs to do. All right, you guys, so I actually let it rise for 20 minutes. It does look bigger, it's gotten bigger. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it in my pan. Now it did not say to spray the pan, but I spray everything. So I did spray my loaf pan. Now I'm just gonna get the dough inside here. Okay, I got my dough in here. Um, definitely could not follow the directions. It wanted me to roll it into a ball, uh, tuck and pinch the ends. It's just way too sticky to do that. There was no doing that. I already cleaned up my mess, but I had flour all over the place trying to do it, and it was just extremely sticky. So I ended up just pouring it into the loaf pan that I did, again, spray. And then I used my, the other egg and a tablespoon of water that I whisked together and I just kind of brushed it on the top. So now it says to let your loaf sit while the oven is preheating. So I'm gonna set my oven to 400 degrees. I do have the rack on the lowest setting so the top doesn't burn. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then I will put this in the oven and bake it for 30 to 40 minutes. All right, I have to say that looks and smells really good. I put a knife in it, nothing came out on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool off and then I will slice a piece. But I was hoping that I could turn this into grilled cheese later on. I don't know if this is gonna be the bread for that, but we'll still try it. But I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool off like I said and I'll cut a piece off so you guys can see what the inside looks like. Okay, so it's still pretty warm, but I wanted to go ahead and cut inside it. It is very, I like how it's crunchy on the outside and it is super soft on the inside. Look at that. Almost like angel food cake. Yum, I'm gonna put a little bit of butter on this and eat it up. <laughs> but like I said, I made this in the hopes of turning it into grilled cheese later on because we're having that with our dinner tonight, but we'll see if that turns out. I definitely like this for a, a loaf of bread. It was super easy and I think it turned out pretty good. All right, you guys, so that is all I have to share with you guys today. Some some weeks I prep the same exact things. You guys, if you have seen any of my past meal prep videos, I typically do like dog food and produce and some sort of like boiled eggs or egg salad, tuna salad, that kind of thing. Today I focused on a little different a few different items just to switch it up. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up. And also, let me know your favorite thing or your go-to thing to meal prep every week down in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys typically do each week. All right, so that is it. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.